Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, we are going to be working on our second section for Chapter 10. Um, Ellie, you're close to getting a new seat. Just giving you a heads up. Um, we are looking on 10-2. 10-2 is dealing with our cash receipts journal. So if we look at our cash receipts journal, it looks very similar Thank you. to um, what we had done before with our cash payments journal, except instead of having a cash a credit column, we have a cash debit. And then the other aspect that we have here is you'll notice that we have a column here for sales. Sales here is a credit. We also have sales tax payable because yesterday we were talking about the sales of our peeps. And if the peeps are a dollar, you don't do the store to one dollar, you give it one dollar and five cents, so we have to account for that. So we will have a column here for sales tax payable credit. And then we also have right here, this is our sales discount debit column. Okay, so we're going to be able to go through and give to our customers some discounts just like some vendors gave us. So, for example, we went through in Chapter 9 and determined if we paid early, we got like a 2% discount. Okay, so then we didn't have to pay the full price. Well, we're going to do that for some of our customers also. So we have to account for that. And sales discount truly is something we give to our best customers. We say, hey, if you pay a little bit early, you can get a little bit money uh, knocked off. So we have to account for that to make sure our debits and credits equal. So, for example, Dylan, great customer, he pays within the first 10 days. Instead of paying me $200, that's what it's listed in his ledger that he owes me is $200. So I have to put accounts receivable as $200, but he gives me cash of $190. My debits and credits don't equal, so I'd have to put that $10 into sales discount. Okay. Sales discount is a contra account to our account sales. Sales has a credit balance, so sales discount would have a debit balance, just like sales returns and allowances. And we'll be looking at that um, tomorrow for Section 10-3. Uh, there are only three sections for this chapter. Um, over the weekend, I did give you your outline for the chapter, so that is in classroom. So today, when we're done on the application assignments, I expect people to be on classroom working on your outline for the chapter, just as a heads up. Uh, the rest of the journal we're going to be treating exactly the same. We do have our general debit and credit columns, accounts receivable credit, and then our cash debit. So let's take a look at the first transaction and see how we can get that recorded. We're going to be going through and recording transactions on page 16 for Graphics, Inc. Um, use the current year, journalize the following transactions beginning on line 1. Source documents are abbreviated as follows. R for receipt. Terminal summary is TS. Terminal summary is going to be what the business prints out to go through and indicate that, hey, this is what I collected from our cash register. That's what TS would stand for. Um, before we used calculator tape, but now we'll use TS. So we have um, four trans or three transactions, and then we're going to go through and total improve our journal, and then we're going to be proving our cash as well. So the transactions, we can see the month that we're in is October. So I'm going to go ahead and put October here for the month. The first one dated the 4th. Received cash and account from Oakley Company, $371, covering S96, R144. They will always give you the original invoice number that they're paying on because that way you can go back and check to see how much the original invoice was. The only one I'm going to be recording in my journal uh, here for the source document is going to be R144. The S96 is just for your reference. So I'm going to put in the date of the 4th. My account title is going to be Oakley Company. I no longer write Accounts Receivable Oakley Company because instead of writing the words Accounts Receivable, I put it in the column here, Accounts Receivable. That's what we did in the last chapter for Accounts Payable as well. Source document again, we're going to put in R144. I can't just put in 144 because a notice on the top, it doesn't say receipt number, it says doc number, so I have to include my letter. So accounts receivable is going to go in for 371. There is nothing stated here about a discount. At the time that Oakley Company purchased the merchandise from us, that's when we recorded our sales tax. So we just have to go in right now and put in 371 here for cash. So that's a really nice, short, simple transaction. When we receive money from a customer, 
This is how we'll record it. On the 13th, we have recording our cash and credit card sales, uh, $8,361.60 plus sales tax of 50170 for a total of $8,863.30. I will give you a heads up. In the near future, they're not going to calculate the sales tax. They'll give it to you. They'll say sales tax is 4%, and you would have to go through and take the value of your sales and multiply it across. The date is going to be the 13th. So when I look at the transaction, the accounts that I'm affecting are going to be sales, sales tax, and cash. All of those are special columns. And because I'm using three special columns, I'm going to go through and put a check mark in the account title, TS43, and then I will also put a check mark in my post reference because, again, I'm using special columns. Sales is going to be debited for $8,361.60. Sales tax is $501.70 for a total cash of $8,863.30. Now, when I look at this transaction here, Really important because you are going to have an assignment in this chapter where they're just going to give you this 8361 and up here in the directions they'll give you a sales tax. So you'd have to calculate your sales tax and then the total cash. It's really easy on those to make a math mistake. The other thing that we're finding is they are giving us transactions that have sense in them now. Slow down to make sure that you enter those incorrectly because that's an easy way of a transposition error, so then your debits and credits are not going to equal. When we were doing chapters 1 through 8, the numbers were relatively easy to double check that we have a debit and a credit they match. But now, if you find that your journal does not come out, you should take your two credits, add it up to make sure it really does equal your debit because if it doesn't, that's going to be where your um, journal does not equal at the end of the page. Phew. Excuse me. Now the third transaction here, the 30th. The third type of transaction we're looking at is basically we are receiving cash from a customer, Sierra Supply, and it's covering S97 for $5,989 less a 2% discount. So a couple things we have to realize. Okay, this is just like the example I talked about in class. So the total amount that Sierra Supply owes us is $5,989. That has to go in our accounts receivable column. If we don't put that there, it will look like Sierra Company still owes us or Sierra Supply still owes us money when in fact they don't. But notice they didn't tell us how much money that they get off. We have to go through and calculate that. So I would have to take 2% of the $5,989. That's going to go on my sales discount debit column. So I'll have a number in sales, sales discount, and then I would subtract those two, and that would get my cash. So let's go through and do that. The date is the 30th. Account title is going to be Sierra Supply for S97. No, R145. Accounts receivable is being credited $5,989. So I, in my calculator, I would put $5,989, and then I'm going to multiply that by 2%. Because in my transaction, it says they got a 2% discount. So the amount of the discount that's going to go into sales discount debit is going to be $119.78. Again, that will go into sales discount as a debit. And then to find your cash, I'll go through. My cash is then going to be the difference, which will be $5,869.22. i got to make sure my debits and credits equal going across.
So I journalized those transactions. Instruction number two, for the end of the month, total improved cash research journal page 16. This shouldn't be too difficult. How many days are there in October? Okay, so put the 31st. Then I'm going to write totals. I know I'm saying totals versus total because there's more than one number. And then you're going to go through and just add these up. One of the things that I start doing when we get to more complicated numbers instead of round even numbers is I always go through and add it up twice just to make sure that I didn't do a math mistake and it's easier to do it now than later on. And if you get the same number twice, most likely you did it correctly then. So I put my totals at the very bottom of my cash receipts journal. Then I'm going to go down here using the spot where we can prove our totals, and I'm going to put my numbers in. So I got my debits and credits to equal from our cash receipts journal. I did not put zeros in because up here on the note it didn't say to put zeros in. A lot of times it will tell us that. Um, so that was my guide on why I chose not to put zeros in my cash receipts debit and credit column and same thing here. Our next instruction is going to be one that's going to throw you off because we haven't done it for a while and that's going to be to prove cash. Anytime you need to prove cash, what you need to have is you need to have your starting cash. And prior to this chapter, all of our businesses starting cash was zero, so that was really easy. But that's not realistic because that's only going to ever happen once for a business over its entire life to have starting cash to zero. So you will always find that the starting cash will be the amount in the ledger prior to the, the um posting the totals for this month, and in this case, they gave it to us in the instructions. So we can see here they said our beginning cash balance was $11,764.96. And to, to prove our cash, we have to get it to equal to what our checkbook says. We do that by taking our cash balance, add our cash receipts, we get a total, and from there we subtract our cash payments, and our cash payments would be our actual physical cash payments journal. We don't physically have our journal here. You will have an assignment where you're going to have to go through and prove your cash without having the little box there, but they're just going to say prove your cash and your checkbook equals this number. 
And how will you know that? After you've posted your totals from your journal to your ledger, the amount in your actual cash ledger should equal the amount in your checkbook. If it doesn't, that's where you've, you've made a mistake. Okay, so mathematically, you're just going to follow the order of what needs to be done on there on when you add and when you subtract. This number right here that I put in, this I always get right from the instructions because the instruction says the checkbook balance, and the main thing is these two numbers need to equal. If they don't, you know you've made a mistake someplace. But otherwise, I think I've rocked my um, work together, so I'm going to save that. You guys can go ahead and do your on your own. Yes, I do know it's graded. They did. Was it? I'll go back. Go ahead. You can do the math. 